A custodian and crossing guard who worked at the same high school for more than two decades passes away after an accident in this school parking lot. Mosquito season is almost here. The health department in Lexington has a plan to keep the population down as concern about the Zika virus grows. Lawmakers are responding after Governor Bevin vetoes three bills and parts of four others. This is WKYT News at 5. It has been a difficult day at a Pulaski County school after a longtime employee died in an accident. Southwestern High School custodian and crossing guard Doyle Patterson died after a truck hit him outside the school yesterday. Our Phil Pendleton shows us how he's being remembered in our top story at 5. A sad start to the day Thursday for nearly everyone at Southwestern High School. We've had grief counselors here from our district that have, are here mainly to support um, not only our students but our staff. The loss hit teachers hard too as 69-year-old Doyle Patterson had been at Southwestern since the school opened its doors in 1994. Very loving, kind, and um, generous. Um, always smiling man. Relatives tell me that Patterson was actually close to retiring. He was a husband, father, and grandfather, married for 48 years. Other friends that have been posting on Facebook making comments saying that he was the friendliest, kindest, most God fearing man they had ever known. State police say the collision happened as Patterson was standing on an access road and was preparing to direct traffic. He was hit as school was being dismissed. He was flown to the University of Tennessee Hospital where he died. It's a very tragic, horrific accident, and our love and support go out um, along with our prayers to the family. Pulaski Funeral Home in Somerset is handling arrangements in Pulaski County. Phil Pendleton, WKYT. State police say they do not think alcohol or drugs played a role in the crash. We heard the rumble of thunderstorms here at the station on Winchester Road this afternoon, and you might hear it as well before the evening's over. Yeah, scattered showers and storms are out there right now. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here now with a look at what's on the radar. Yeah, those uh, scattered storms, few and far between now, as a much better brand of air blows into the bluegrass state. Say that one three times. We look outside in Lexington, and a sky that an hour and a half ago was dark. We had thunder, had lightning, and heavy rain has turned blue. Over top of Hamburg Pavilion, 78 degrees, 50 percent humidity. That humidity is starting to drop a little bit. Winds are coming at us now from the southwest, still at 14 miles an hour, though some drier air beginning to press on into town. And that's a giant squeegee. It is just wiping the atmosphere clean, pushing those showers and thunderstorms across eastern Kentucky. A little storm to the south of Moorhead. Looks like it's around Clearfield, right on top of 519 uh, in the northern sections of Morgan County, heading over toward Elliott County. That may have some pea sized hill with it. That's spiking up into the atmosphere pretty good. Uh, not even close to being severe, though. Showers weakening Beattyville, Boonville, down toward the Lorn, uh, London and Corbin areas. And look out across western Kentucky. Can't even find a cloud in the sky west of 65. That's what blows in here as we go through the day tomorrow. Beautiful hour by hour future radar as we continue to see those showers and storms pressing well to our east. That'll set us up for a fantastic Friday before the storms return into the weekend. And that leads us into Kentucky Derby Week. First week of May around here. You got to love it. We'll have the forecast that will show you how. We go from bumpy to maybe a little cooler, guys. New hour by hour is in. I'll share it with you in a few minutes. We'll see you then, Chris. Thank you. As we get closer to summer and mosquito season, concern over the Zika virus is growing. That virus spreads through mosquito bites. NASA scientists have created this map to show which parts of the U.S. are most at risk. And as you can see, the southern and eastern parts of the country are most likely to see cases. Here in Lexington, the health department is not waiting for Zika to show up. They're starting the fight right now with an aggressive plan to reduce the mosquito population. WKYT's Garrett Weimer is live for us off Bryan Station Road to show us what they're doing. Garrett? Yeah, as concerns about Zika continue to grow, Lexington's health department says they've targeted mosquito hotspots where they've gotten complaints about mosquitoes the past two years. Their map shows a cluster of those complaints and the neighborhood here along Harrogate Road. Now, starting next week, they'll be out in neighborhoods just like this one, passing out these door hangers and looking for mosquito breeding grounds. 
The health department says each year they spray for mosquitoes, but this year they want to make sure people know what they can do to get rid of things mosquitoes love, and mainly that's standing water. Health officials plan to go door to door surveying for mosquitoes and potential breeding sites. Yeah, if you've got a door hanger on your home, it just means that it's an area that we've had complaints. Doesn't mean it's a hot spot, doesn't mean you're truly at more risk than, say, your neighbor or somebody across town. It just means this is a place that's been identified as a possible breeding ground for mosquitoes, and there's some steps you can take to eliminate that. Now, the health department plans to identify the top 20 areas for mosquito complaints at a news conference on Wednesday. Their hope in all this is to reduce breeding sites, which would in turn reduce the mosquito population and in turn again help control diseases mosquitoes spread, including Zika. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. The health department says they typically start spraying for mosquitoes June 1st. An inmate serving time for fleeing and evading police has escaped from jail. Our county by county coverage begins in Knox County. Authorities say that Dale Valentine walked off during cleanup of the Christian Appalachian project in Corbin. His last known address was in London. In Madison County, police have arrested a man in a bold robbery attempt. Richmond police say that Patrick Randolph followed the hotel owner's wife and four-year-old grandson behind the desk at the Quality Quarters. We're told he showed a knife and demanded money and then threatened to hold the child if she didn't comply. Police say another employee showed up and fought with Randolph until he got the knife from him. Randolph ran off and police caught him downtown. He is charged with robbery and wanton endangerment. And in Clay County, a man facing charges in a shooting. State police say that Michael Bishop fired at two men in a car. A bullet hit one of those men in the neck, injuring him. Bishop is charged with assault and wanton endangerment. Divers returned to a southern Kentucky lake today to use sonar to look for any sign of a missing man. Clarence Holmes disappeared while helping boaters during a storm on Laurel Lake in July of 2012. His family tells WKYT the divers couldn't do much yesterday because of all the rain. They're not sure when the teams will leave the lake. Governor Bevan has issued vetoes of the 2016 legislative session. He struck down three bills and parts of four others. WKYT's Mark Barber shows us the changes and how lawmakers are reacting. House Democrats say they are still reviewing the governor's vetoes. Since there were many changes to a number of bills, they say they're carefully picking through the vetoes, trying to figure out what funding and programs have been cut. In all, the governor struck down three bills and vetoed parts of four others. In the highly contentious state budget bill, Governor Matt Bevin used his veto power to axe dozens of items. Here are some of the main changes from yesterday's vetoes. Bevin delayed giving free tuition to students enrolling in community colleges this year, and he also cut funding that would have allowed more children in poverty to qualify for preschool. Bevin's vetoes include funding for several preventative health measures, like screenings for colon cancer and breast cancer. The governor says he also shot down a new driver's license bill because there was a tremendous amount of opposition to it. The bill would have required licenses to be updated to meet federal security standards. Bevin's vetoes are drawing criticism from the Speaker of the House. In a statement, Greg Stumbo said, no forward-thinking governor would have acted in this way. It's a sad and unfortunate day for all of Kentucky. Bevin does not see it that way. He says these vetoes were needed to save the state money. He's pleased with the state budget, calling it a fiscally responsible piece of legislation. In Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. Lawmakers cannot override any of the governor's vetoes because the 2016 legislative session is over. We have a traffic alert for drivers who use the Clays Ferry Bridge. There will be lane closures on the bridge for 10 days so it can be inspected. The closures will be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. from May 3rd to May 13th. The two left lanes on the southbound side will be closed from 6.30 to midnight on May 3rd for work to the bridge deck. An honor today for a group of children who fought to limit smoking in their community. Seven fourth and fifth graders from Middlesboro Independent received the Kentucky Center for Smoke Free Policy Community Award. The students made a presentation on the hazards of secondhand smoke to the Middlesboro City Council. They also gathered 456 signatures, leading to a comprehensive smoke free workplace ordinance.
Well, some people like it and some do not like it, so, but most of the people like it and they're glad that we did it. The awards were given after a forum on the UK campus with a tobacco industry whistleblower. The race of the Republican presidential nomination for it could be nearing its end. The role Indiana might play in that. A conference on cancer is taking place at the Vatican today. The breakthroughs and treatments being discussed in Better Living. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Well, hope you're having a great Thursday. Weather-wise, certainly much better than our Tuesday and Wednesday when we had just wall-to-wall -wall, uh, thunderstorm action across the area. Yes, we have a couple of storms, but look at our live sky cams out there right now. We've got nine different locations showing up on this map. Contrast Louisville and E-Town sky cam. Look at all the blue skies where you're hard-pressed to find any clouds over Louisville now. Starting to see a similar sky in Lexington, yet the farther east that we go, that Campton and Jenkins cam with some clouds. That's a different air mass across eastern Kentucky compared to the one that is coming in from the west. And that's what we're getting in on, not only for tonight, but into your Friday as well. You can pick out the areas getting in on some rains, low 70s outside of that. It's upper 70s, tickling 80 degrees into the Frankfurt area and across Jackson right now. Those showers and storms from earlier beginning to weaken just a little bit. Right on top of the Moorhead area, southeastward we go toward Elliottville and into Sandy Hook, Wrigley into Morgan County with a couple of light raindrops, Beattyville, Boonville, south of the Howe Rogers Parkway. Forget about it if you're thinking about it, these thunderstorms just washing out a softball game or a little league game this evening. Maybe you got high school baseball or high school softball action should be in pretty good shape across most areas low pressure not too far away from the Indy and Dayton Ohio areas working quickly to the east dragging that uh, air that cold front through the region the air coming in behind that focus on Paducah Memphis and into the Ozarks look how clear the skies are great weather there rolls in here for our Friday how good are we talking about mid to upper 70s Tomorrow afternoon, humidity levels are lower, maybe a touch of fog in the morning and more sun than clouds as the day wears on. Then we focus on a storm system that is way away from us now. That is a thunderstorm maker for the weekend. That is approximately 1,200 miles, just in case you were curious, from downtown Lexington now. So it's going to work its way across the Plain States and be in here to start the weekend. Let's break down that weekend forecast as we go into it on a very nice note for your Friday. It's a breezy and a warm spring day, spring at its finest on a Friday, Saturday. Yeah, so much for that spring fine part of the forecast. Uh, storms return to the area. A few of those could be strong. Heavy rain is a possibility too. Sunday, a few rounds of thunderstorms, locally heavy rain. Now, it isn't going to rain the entire time, Saturday and or Sunday. So if you've got some yard work to do, tomorrow's going to be your pick day, but I do think you can squeeze a few hours in on both Saturday and Sunday. 50s tomorrow morning, that hour by hour forecast showing the nice weather into the afternoon with the 70s. Then quickly tomorrow evening, clouds will increase. When you wake up Saturday morning, there's at least a chance for a shower or a thunderstorm. And as the day goes on, it's rounds of showers and storms, not a constant rain that'll carry us through Saturday night and right on into the day on Sunday with some areas over the past three days picking up greater than three inches of rain. You get another cluster or two of some heavy rain producing thunderstorms over the weekend. You could have at least some local high water issues, something we'll keep you up to date on, obviously, as we always do. Kentucky Derby Week next week, month of May starts. It turns a little cooler than normal with generally 60s for highs. Could be a shower or thunderstorm, especially on Tuesday or Wednesday. But much better this evening. Tomorrow, Keeneland, sounds like it'd be a perfect day. Are you, if are you've you, got the day off. Are you suggesting we play hooky and head to Keeneland I tomorrow? Don't think that's allowed. Probably <laughs> not, but you know what? We could play the ponies anyway from afar, right? We just tell everyone else to go out and enjoy it for us. How about that? We live vicariously <laughs> through you people. <laughs> we do. Thanks, Chris. And live look at election and rush hour traffic. Clear the collision on the inner loop of Man Award Palumbo. So all lanes are open there, which is helping out a bunch. Keeneland traffic this afternoon on Versailles Road with delays in and out down Versailles Road. The officers work the button to get people out. As far as drive times go, to Nicholasville so far, holding our own up to 15 minutes or so. Winchester on 64 still looks okay. Now back to you in the studio. The sheriff's office investigating the death of Prince is asking for help from the federal government. The reason next.
A central Kentucky school district considering keeping a drug on hand to help overdose victims. Why they think it's necessary on WKYT News at 530. Prescription pills have become the focus of the investigation in the death of Prince. The Carver County, Minnesota Sheriff's Office has contacted the Drug Enforcement Administration. They want help with the investigation if the pills found at Prince's home are related to his death. Entertainment Tonight is reporting Prince had an ongoing problem with painkillers. He had hip replacement surgery in 2010, and people close to Prince tell me he struggled with uh, painkillers due to his hip and ankle issues. The sheriff's office is waiting on toxicology results. Once that is complete, the DEA will look into what pills Prince took, where the drugs came from, and if a doctor prescribed them. Family and friends gathered amid extra security to remember one of the eight people murdered in Ohio last week. Gary Roden's funeral took place at a funeral home in Greenup County this afternoon. He was buried in South Shore. Roden, six other adults, and a teenager were found dead at four homes in Pike County, Ohio last Friday. Investigators say they were killed in planned execution style shootings. No arrests have been made. Voters in Indiana could decide who clinches their party's nomination for president. And as the race nears the finish line, the candidates are facing harsh criticism, but not just from their opponents. Craig Boswell is tracking campaign 2016. Ted Cruz, looking for votes ahead of next Tuesday's crucial primary, is fending off a new jab from the former Speaker of the House. John Boehner attacked Cruz during a talk at Stanford. Lucifer in the flesh. Over my dead body, will it be breath? He allowed his inner Trump to come out. Cruz says it's proof of his campaign's claim that he is the anti Washington candidate, something he reiterated during a rally in Fort Wayne. Donald and Hillary, they are both. Washington insiders. While Cruz and his new running mate Carly Fiorina tour the state, Donald Trump is on stage again with Indiana coaching legend Bobby Knight, where the billionaire quickly turned to mocking Cruz. He was saying, I'm the only one that can beat Donald Trump. I have proven it time and time again. You know, I'm saying, oh, please. Indiana and its 57 delegates are seen as critical as to whether Cruz can stop Trump from gaining the support needed to lock up the nomination. The eyes of the entire country are on the state of Indiana right now. If we win in Indiana, it's over. A new CBS News estimate shows Donald Trump has 79% of the 1,237 delegates needed. For the Democrats, there are almost 92 delegates at stake next week. While Hillary Clinton has no public events today, Bernie Sanders is campaigning in Oregon a day after downsizing his staff. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. Bernie Sanders laid off about 200 staffers and says they hope to rehire many of them if the senator wins the Democratic nomination. It appears more and more chicken owners are running afoul of the law. We look at the rise in citations for foul on the run on WKYT News at 530. What's being discussed at an international conference on cancer and a change for Chicken McNuggets? The story's next in Better Living. It is time now for Better Living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. It's an unlikely setting for an international cancer conference, but doctors, patients, and politicians are meeting at the Vatican to discuss breakthroughs and future treatments, including stem cell research. Jonathan Vigilotti shows us how a young cancer survivor from New York is stealing the show. It's exciting. I mean, this is crazy. Alana Simon's battle with cancer has taken her all the way to Vatican City. Even when I first started doing research, I never expected it to be this successful. The 20 year old is speaking to some of the world's leading cancer researchers at the Cellular Horizons Medical Conference, eight years after doctors diagnosed her with a rare liver cancer. I've been completely healthy, um, newly grown liver. Alana was 12 when doctors removed her tumor. At first, my initial response was, okay, I'm done. That was. You know, an interesting chapter of my life, but I'm done with it. Well, in remission, she started a new chapter to investigate her disease and help others. A journey that's led her here to the Vatican. And you just really need tissue samples. She turned to YouTube and asked other kids with her same type of cancer to send in samples of their own tumors. 65 people did. Under the supervision of her father, a scientist, she discovered a common mutation in each sample. Alana Simon. CBS News medical correspondent Dr. Max Gomez introduced Alana at the conference. She was able to take her own cancer, grab it by the horns, if you will, do 
genetic sequencing on it and really find out what it was that caused her cancer. Alana says her research could one day help find cures for more common cancers. If someone else had gotten this instead of me, maybe it wouldn't have turned into something as beneficial. The New Yorker returns to the lab this summer, but first heads back to Harvard for finals. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Vatican City. Vice President Joe Biden will speak at the conference tomorrow about his moonshot cancer initiative. His son died of brain cancer last year. McDonald's is trying to make what's inside Chicken McNuggets a little less mysterious. The chain is testing recipes without artificial preservatives. McDonald's won't give details on the new formula, but says the recipe is more simple. Now, here's what's coming up for you at 530.